Hello little buns, it is Steph, welcome back to my home. I want to revisit a video I did a while ago called Voice Training 101 for Trans Women, I believe was the title, I might be off by a word or two. Voice training can be very important to trans women in order to boost their safety level, possibly, right? Because unfortunately passing, as much as I hate the word and the concept, does make you less likely to be murdered, um, which is awful, but it, it's just Sometimes you need, for personal safety reasons, to train your voice to be more what is commonly known as feminine. I don't think there is such a thing as a male voice or a female voice. I think voices, just like people, are on a spectrum. But if you want to feminize your voice to be more conventionally feminine, this is what I do and what I've done to get myself to a better point, to where I feel more comfortable for safety reasons and also just for personal reasons. You may want to view this as a part two to the last voice training video I did, which will be, there's a link in the description box if you want to go to that and watch it, or there's also a card if you're on mobile or whatever. There's a link somewhere here where you can go watch that if you want, but I'm going to go over how my methods are now, basically, and you can see how it's changed from last time if you're interested, whatever you want. The most important thing that you need to be able to do is to visualize your voice as something. You might want to visualize it as an energy, like some kind of light. You might want to visualize it in your head through some kind of scientific diagram where you can see like a bar moving around. As long as you can see it in your head, as long as you can picture the idea of your voice being an object or a solidness in your body, you're going to be able to do this, okay? If it helps, you might want to write it out or to illustrate something, but hopefully you can just picture it in your mind. So when I started doing this, my voice was resonating from a different part of my body. So when, when I was speaking normally before, my voice resonated from my chest. And I can still feel my voice a little bit in my chest, especially when I go to a lower or like a calmer kind of thing like this. I can still feel it in my chest. But when I'm excited, when I'm talking like I normally would, it feels more like it's in my throat. So if I go back down to where I was as best as I can before I started voice training now, I will just like, I want to just let you know. If you do this for a long time, subconsciously, you just let it build up, eventually you'll have to force yourself to go back to your other voice. So it's not something that you're going to have to constantly be thinking of. At first, maybe, and most likely you will. But as time goes on, it will become totally natural for you to speak in your new voice, right? It's not like it's a fake voice, it's just your voice, especially after a lot of practice and a lot of time. So if I try to go back down to where I started, it takes some time. I like to go in a scale and just keep on lowering it until I get there. I think this is about where I would have been, and it still doesn't... I don't know how accurate this is to my old stuff. I'll put in a clip in here of one of my more popular older videos to see if it's like accurate or not. I don't know, but um, that way you can see where I was before. I've been reading your comments and things as you post them, and I really like to hear from you and, and hear, you know, what you like and what you don't like about pretty much everything. And even in that clip, I was kind of trying to be a little bit more excitable, which would bring my voice up a couple octaves or whatever you want to say. I don't really, I don't know how to read music or read notes, but that's just my idea of what's what's going on. So right now, if you try to speak in your regular voice, or if you have a higher voice, try to go down low and try to feel where you can hear your voice resonating from. So for me, it's mostly, I can feel a lot of vibration right here, right in the center of my chest. And if you're picturing that, you can kind of see it in your chest, right? What you want to try to do is to picture it moving upwards into your throat so that you can feel it in your throat right here. So when you have that idea in your head, when you can picture that, it's hard to know at first how to do that, but you want to kind of, I, I don't really know how to explain it besides picture it and try to make it real. <laughs> it's hard to explain. What you're doing really when you change the pitch of your voice or when you move from chest to throat to head voice is you are changing the way that your voice goes through the little flaps in your neck. I don't know the words. I don't, but that's, I know that's what's happening is the air is passing through your, your vocal cords and creating different sounds and you can manipulate that. That's how people sing. That's why people have different voices is because their cords are different. It is worth noting, and I probably should have said this at the beginning, if you're on hormone replacement therapy, it's not going to change your voice, okay? Hormone replacement therapy did not change my voice. Training, being conscious of where my voice is coming from is what has changed my voice. And even that, it's like, it's just something that I can manipulate. It does become natural to speak in a certain way, but I'm not actually physically changing my body. You know what I mean? So if we go back down to here, you can feel it in your chest, okay? Just try to raise the pitch as best you can. You can even go into a really ridiculous falsetto if you want. Oh my god! I know a lot of people teach you to go into the Mickey Mouse voice, and that's not something I did a lot, but I think it would be handy if you don't have experience shifting between head and chest voice to do that, to go into your Mickey Mouse voice. So go up literally as high as you can, way up here, 
and then work your way down until you can get to a place that sounds a little bit more natural, like right here. If that helps you, that's a great method too. But for me, I just was able to work from up, like from, from down, from deep voice into a, a, like a chest or a head voice, you know what I mean? But if you need to go to ridiculous Mickey Mouse voice and work your way down, that's okay. That's a great method too. I just find that kind of overcomplicated things for me when I was starting out because it wasn't necessary. I don't know. So one more time, let's go over this again. And I would encourage you to practice this every night or every day. And I'll get into that a little bit in a second, but we're gonna we're gonna visualize this one more time. So visualize your voice in your chest. Okay, visualize it in your chest, visualize it down here. And then picture it moving up, some kind of a light. You can picture it moving way up if you want, way, way into Mickey Mouse voice. Way up into Mickey Mouse voice, there it is. And then if you wanna bring it back down, you can just picture it moving down your head, picture it moving back down into your throat, which is where I am right now. And then picture it moving back down into your chest until you reach about here, which is right here, okay? And your boobies. That's where you want to picture it. And then move it back up into your throat right here where it's good. Then move it back up into Mickey Mouse voice and then back down. If you can just go up and down between chest and Mickey Mouse, you will be able to go to your neck voice, your throat voice, your head voice a lot easier. So I recommend doing that. Now, when it comes to conversation, you're not going to want to go into Mickey Mouse voice before you talk to people because that's going to be really hard to explain. So do it on your own time, and then I find what's happened is when I start talking to people I have not met before, my voice naturally just goes into this really, really light, really gentle kind of, oh, like, I would like to pay with a MasterCard, please. Like, it goes into a different voice. It goes into, like, a phone or a customer service voice, naturally. And I think that with training on your own, you can get to the point where that sounds totally natural, too. So I hope this has been helpful in some way. If you want a different kind of explanation, again, you can check out my old video. I have not watched it in forever. I don't even know what I say in it, really. But this is the method that I use right now just to maintain my voice at the pitch that I want because I don't go out very often. I spend most of my time in my house, so practicing my speech is something I have to do, okay? That's all, that's all. Until next time, just remember, you are a wonderfully flexible vocal cord and you can manipulate your voice to be whatever you want because you have the power, okay? I love you, I believe in you, you've got this. Practice makes perfect, you're an angel, okay? Until next time, I love you so much, bye!